very windy evening here in Bangkok. Riemann Roshan back at the Raja Mangala Stadium to determine the third and fourth placing between Uzbekistan and Australia at the AFC Under-23 Championship. And some may say, Roshan, that this is even more important than the final because of that final remaining golden ticket to Tokyo 2020. Yep. Although, Roshan, Uzbekistan, um, you know, in order to get through tonight, they do need to find the back of the net, something that they couldn't do against Saudi Arabia. Yeah, you know, I'm going to say as well, this is the first of two finals, I think, that we've got in this competition because of that uh, Olympic spot available to one of these two sides. Um, but yes, you're right, they're going to have to try and find goals in this game against Australia. And I think that's why they've made the changes that they've made. Uh, they made two changes to their starting lineup. Uh, took Tassin off uh, and Mirakmadov come in for Bozorov and Kodirkulov. And I think especially with uh, Mirakmadov coming in, perhaps gives them a bit more physicality up front. And I think that's what they will need against this Australian side. They may have taken a leaf out of uh, Korea Republic's book in terms of the tactics, in terms of getting that physicality up front. Um, normally, Uzbekistan like to set up in a 4-4-1-1, uh, which moves into a 4-2-3-1. Uh, I'm wondering if they go with a 4-4-2 here with the two up top in uh, Abdel Holikov uh, and Mirak Madov or does Abdel Holikov just drop in behind and uh, they still stay with the 4-4-1-1 uh, formation there but uh, I think with the physicality up front, I think that's what they're looking at uh, to try and get the ball into someone who can perhaps hold it up for them uh, in certain situations and also help them out defensively uh, at set pieces if need be. Right. Now, there are some players in this Uzbekistan side who were in the under-19 side who did beat Australia uh, back in 2016, Bahrain. Um, you know, some people may say history and statistics don't matter, but to players, what kind of mentality do you think um, this sort of like encourages them or motivates them? Yeah, you know, I think what you see is the younger players coming through and developing and it, at age group level at times, it, it can be a situation where, you know, you get one group of players in there and then by the time the next competition comes around, you get another group of players. It's always lots of changes uh, in that setup, you know, it can be uh, difficult sometimes to really sort of look at patterns emerging and to say how much of an impact, you know, let's say having beaten this team in the under-16s or in the under-19s or whatever it is, can have on this game. For me, it's a one-off match now. I think, you know, yes, perhaps some of the Uzbek players might be thinking uh, we've beaten Australia before at a different age group, but that was also a very different Australian side, you know, and again, uh, the development of players coming into this competition and, you know, I think for both these teams, it's just this one-off game that they've got to focus on. Forget about what's happened in the past. Yeah. This is where it matters. This match determines whether you make it into Tokyo 2020 yeah. or whether your Olympic dreams are dead. And Graham Arnell, he has gotten this team this far. You know, they taught their group. They've beaten Syria. They've beaten Thailand. Um, what can they do tonight to push themselves over the line and, you know, keep Uzbekistan at bay to secure that final spot? Well, he's made six changes to his starting lineup. Uh, that's something we've seen from Graham Arnold and Australia in this competition. They keep chopping and changing their lineups. And when you try and watch their games, it's a little bit more difficult to sort of analyze Australia's matches because they have different shapes, different setups at times. Mm -hmm. What has generally been uh, sort of the same has been uh, the goalkeeper and three of the back four. So you've got Gersbach, D uh, Dylan Ryan, uh, and Tas Morikutas, uh, those three in those defensive positions. Then it'll either be uh, Thomas Deng or, or Gabriel Clare. Uh, for this game, it's Thomas Deng who comes in and he's a little bit more defensively secure, I feel, in those one-on-ones. So uh, when I've looked at Australia's games, what most teams try to do is actually attack them down the right-hand side. Uh, majority of teams look to try and use the width against them. It was the same for Korea Republic as well. If you look at the attacking thirds and where they focus their attacks, yes, they went through the middle at, at times to use the physicality of Sehun, but they were also able to use the width very well against Australia in that game. So Uzbekistan, on the other hand, like to get down the right-hand side. That's their most threatening uh, part of the pitch. You know, Ali Zhonov uh, moving forward from a, a right-back position, linking up with Yakshiboev. And most of their key passes, most of their chances come from that side of the pitch. But it's also where teams try to attack them. So defensively, perhaps, opposition sides look at that and think there's a weakness there that we could exploit. Uh, Piscopo has come into the, the starting lineup here. And uh, he's going to be uh, supported by Gersbach from a, a left fullback position. So Piscopo likes to drift inside, move into central areas, try and link up with uh, Diagostino uh, in there. We've also got Bauman starting up front for them. So what they try, will we'll try to do perhaps in this game is Australia as usual, try to dominate the central areas. And if they can't break through those central positions, then they look to release into those wider positions right. when they do narrow the opposition defence. And that's when the likes of Gersbach can get forward and use that space down the left-hand side uh, to whip crosses in. So I'm expecting uh, that area of the pitch to be one to keep an eye on some interesting battles across the park as well. Mm -hmm. Thanks for that, Roshan. We'll see if that actually happens. All to play <laughs> for tonight, a very decisive 90 minutes or more into extra time or even penalties depending on how the score is. Good luck to both teams and we will see you for the reviews in the Full Time Show.